You guys seem like a little energy. Can you scream at me one more time? Yeah! Let's just keep it about there, because I, I want to share with you one of the most, I want to tell you about the most significant head cold I ever had. <laughs> now nah, you guys aren't up to it. I, I, I don't think you're up to it. I, I don't think you can handle this kind of story. It's serious. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I will tell you about the second most significant head cold I ever experienced. How's that sound? As a compromise. You want the first one, then you're gonna cheer and yell for the rest of the night? Okay, then I will tell you about the most significant head cold I ever experienced. So horrifying was this head cold that I didn't have it. I had someone have it for me because it was a good idea. Yeah, we got people for that. So it was, it, it was two years ago. And you got to realize two years ago, new people, we didn't have this show. The Circus Freaks, which are the performers uh, and the production company that put this together, didn't exist. And there was this wicked, evil head cold going around town. It was that spackle your brain shut. And I got a phone call from the director of the Labyrinth Walk Coffee House, which is down in Oak Cliff. I'm sure if you know it. If you don't know it, you should go down. It's a very cool place. Once a year, they do a vaudeville night. We know a little something about vaudeville these days. Might say we learned it there, so bravo to them. We went out there because they called us and they said, one of our performers is down with a head cold. Can you save us? Now, again, I mentioned we didn't have a circus freaks back then. We didn't have a show. We, didn't, we had nothing. We had six people sitting in performer Marie Martin's living room drinking tea, talking about what it would take to become performers. And I walked into that room full of people and said, we have five days. <laughs> five days later, we had rehearsed, costumed, choreographed, and successfully performed our first performance as the Circus Freaks. <laughs> A year later, at our, just after our first birthday, we were invited back because we did not burn the place down. We went, we went back and when we got there, we brought solo performers because the first time we put like five people on the stage because we were too shy to get up there alone. So we said, let's cram a stilt walker, a couple of jugglers, a poi spinner, and a hula hooper all into a 10 by 10 platform. Yeah. That'll be perfectly safe. And magically, we didn't ruin anything. He's a very good day. <laughs> there, don't do this. Really, don't do this. So we successfully come back and we bring soloists. Uh, it was Monkey Jacks, who's not with us tonight, but he's one of our first performers. Uh, Marie Martin, who's here in the house, and myself went up there, and we, we rocked it, we did pretty well. They invited us back again. So we went from a gaggle of people not knowing what they're doing on stage to three really solid solo performers. This year, after, just after our second birthday, they invited us back last weekend. So we sent a couple of performers out there. Let me show you an idea of how much we've grown. This year, we sent them two acts, one of which was a two-performer act featuring a performer from our new Junior Freaks program, which is our up-and-coming performers. We didn't have that a couple of months ago, but now we have a training program for new performers. <laughs> they were fully costumed, and more importantly, they had already performed these acts here in a show that we created and had been running for a year and a half. So first of all, let's shout out from that show, Marie Martin, Kasha Reese, and Rachel Hullett. Yeah. Significant point about growth. Each year I'm trying to show you we've grown a little bit, right? We grew a little bit more than that. You see, this was the first year I wasn't there. I'm the director of the Circus Freaks, and I wasn't there because I was asked to go perform in another show, and this show we had these acts so polished, they could go out and just do their thing. We sent Johnny Morbid with them to take care of them, and they ran a perfect evening while I was in San Angelo. Being accused of murder. I'll, co I'll come back to that in a moment. But the reason we got ready for that, I have to thank you guys, because we've had a year and a half to screw around on this stage, and I wanted to thank you all for that. Now, about that murder I mentioned, I got asked with just a couple of days notice if I would play a gangster. And I said, I don't really think I have that in me to play the villain. <laughs> but I did. 
And I got out of a car and I walked in and there was no time because we had had a flat tire and things were going wrong. So we went in back, changed into full costumes, went out and they met a performing character named Doug Graves. I am not going to give you a dose of Doug Graves right now because actually I'm suffering from performer Tourette's where that character keeps trying to leap out of me. So here's what we're gonna do. You are going to let me reestablish my identity as Russ tonight and in return for that next week, we will have our first ever gangster and mobster night at the Oakson stage. So you guys, I expect you to be here, you know, in full costume and character, okay? Forget about it, let's move on. <laughs>